Hello and welcome to Paint Along Studios TV. We will be painting Fall Is Here, so grab your favorite painting music and let's get started. We're going to need some supplies. We'll use some paper towels, some water for brushes, some styrofoam plates, and some liquid acrylics. We'll need some white, some deep yellow, some fire red, some Mars black, phthalo blue, and some phthalo green. We're also going to need some brushes. A number 10 filbert brush, stiff bristle, number 2 fan brush, that's optional, number 6 round brush, and a number 0 script brush. We'll start with the number 10 filbert brush. We need one big scoop of white and two scoops of chrome yellow. We're going to mix those together. We're going to create a nice little um, burst of yellow in this top right corner here. We want to use um, a nice back and forth stroke, but we can kind of tilt our brush this way and that. We want to make sure that we get to the halfway point. So if our painting was cut in half this way and also up and down, that's how far we want to get over. All right, we want to get some orange. We want a little dab of the, our fire red, adding it here. So I have kind of a very light orange. Then we want to get a darker orange with a big scoop of yellow and a small dab of fire red. We'll start with the lighter one though, so grab a paper towel and wipe some of it out and start with the lighter orange. Let's go ahead and start working our way out of our nice little glow. We're going to work some of this color into the glow just so it has an easy transition. But we also want to let the glow get bigger, so we're going to add some to the white edges as well. So keep working it into the yellow and then also let it come into the white space a little bit more. Grab the darker orange. You can adjust the color. I adjusted it just a little bit, made it a little bit darker just to have some kapow factor to it. And I put some all around the edge and then I'm going to begin working it into the color. I wipe some of the paint out of my brush and try to merge the colors together, meaning I'll wipe my brush every once in a while so that the colors will blend rather than the darker color keep taking over the lighter color. After I've kind of merged them just a little bit, I'm going to start filling in all the rest of the canvas with our nice kind of warm orange. You don't have to completely uh, merge the colors together. We want it a little bit messy and we'll, we'll play a little bit more with the texture and everything like that in a minute here. But go ahead and fill in the rest of the canvas with our nice warm orange. All right. Let's get another color real quick. We want a scoop of chrome yellow and a scoop of fire red, and we're going to mix them together and get a darker version of our orange. So make sure it's darker. We're going to start in the bottom left corner, and we're just going to try to work it into the canvas. I'm using this nice X motion. See that? X, 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 X. Kind of a flat X motion. You can use kind of whatever you want, but this is the texture I like to get in here. But I want to start working some along this it's kind of this uh, left-hand side. I can put a little bit going up as well, but I want to work it into the color just a little bit. I'm grabbing it every once in a while, but then I'm letting, letting it eventually run out and just kind of mix with the warm orange color. Okay, we're going to take a paper towel, get some of the paint out. We're going to start getting rid of the sections we have. So I'm going to start dab, 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 dabbing. It's like I'm poking the canvas into that yellow section, okay? Don't make polka dots. Don't have them all spread out. Have some of them kind of getting um, mixed together just a little bit, so touching each other. Let's get some more colors to work with. We're going to grab some white, a dab of white, and a scoop of yellow, maybe a little bit bigger. Mix it together. Okay, now we have some yellow to work with, and we're going to introduce some of the yellow into our deeper oranges. And again, we're using that dabbing technique. Remember, we don't want polka dots, we want dabs, meaning they're messy little pokes of our brush, and they're, some of them are close together, some of them are touching. In this light zone, I want them all really close together touching, and then as they travel, as they merge into the kind of orangier, darker zone, I'm spreading them out just a little bit, so they can have a little bit more space between them. But I want to create kind of this fun texture. I don't want everything... So neat and tidy, I want some of the colors to be fading into the orange. And the paint is still wet, so as I'm dragging the yellow, 
I'm also dragging some of the orange into the yellow again. So it's coming back and forth between them. Go ahead and clean your brush. You want to pound it up and down in the water. And then you want to dry it off using two paper towels. There's a lot of water in there, so you want to make sure you get it nice and dry. So give it a good squeeze. Get all that water out of there. Okay, and then I'm going to dry it real quick. Make sure it's all dry. And then I'm going to mix my next color. I'm going to get a new plate. That one's kind of full, so I'm just going to put it on top of that one. I'm going to get two scoops of white. And I'm going to get a little dab of phthalo green and two dabs of phthalo blue. I want kind of a robin egg color, so kind of a turquoisey blue sky type of thing. And I'm going to go ahead and create some sky. I'm going to cut through this and make the leaves kind of cutting through. I started in the top corner, just cutting in a little bit, and then I want to get a big section at the bottom. So I'm using kind of a little bit of dabbing, a little bit of wiggling. I'll use even more dabbing in a minute, but right now I just want to get rid of any hard edges. See how I'm kind of getting rid of some of these edges. I'm traveling into the canvas slightly. Dab, 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 dab. Remember the dabs are going to get smushed together. I want to wipe my brush out and I want to make even smaller dabs with a little bit less paint in my brush. I'm going to start cutting through the center as well. Don't make any huge cuts because remember it want, we want to have a big cluster of leaves. These are going to be our leaves. But we do want little small ones, little clusters. See how there's ones that are kind of separate and then ones that are smushed together. Definitely play with the edges. So see this, I'm playing with the edge a little bit. I want to cut it up just a little bit more with these smaller little bits. Make sure you cut it up with the smaller little dabs. Kind of spread out in there. So a little here, a little there. Just kind of looking at the overall shape. Try not to get rid of too many of the leaves but we do want it kind of chopped up a little bit. Okay, just kind of evening out some of the blue down here. Sometimes you need two coats in areas. And then we're going to go ahead and get that paint out of the brush, pound it up and down, dry it off. And we're going to go ahead and squeeze our brush dry, get two scoops of white, and a small scoop of Mars Black. We're going to start getting our tree trunk in there. Okay, so our tree is going to come up and it needs to end up somewhere in the leaves. So pick a good spot somewhere in the middle, a little bit high up. And I'm going to kind of wiggle my way down. I want to have at least one nice little wiggle, little turn or curve in the tree. And then I want to come almost straight down. It can slant just slightly. This is going to be thin on the end and then it's going to get much wider as the trunk travels down. Go ahead and start getting it a little bit wider, a little bit wider. How wide do we want it on the bottom? I use my brush. I want the bristles plus that metal part of the brush. That's about how wide I like it. It can be a little wider or a little bit less. Don't have kind of this witch's hat type of thing. It's getting very narrow. I want it to be a little bit thicker right after the curve. So it has a little bit less of that kind of witch hat feel. So it just starts getting really, really narrow towards the top. It's almost the equal amounts at the bottom area. Okay, so I want to fix it just a little bit, add a little bit of width down here at the bottom area, just so it starts getting thinner very quickly. So the bottom will be almost the same thickness. Clean our brush again. We're going to switch to our number six brush. I'm grabbing the same color and I'm going to start filling the tree up with branches. Okay, I'm going to have some wiggly branches. You decide how wiggly, but the ends of them have to end up somewhere in the leaves, not where the blue is. Okay, you also want to make sure you go back and thicken the branch right where they connect to the tree. Always follow the thick to thin rule with trees. The thickest part is always at the bottom. As it gets further and further from the trunk of the tree, it gets thinner and thinner. So pick and choose. Just make sure they can cross over on the blue, but they have to end up somewhere on the yellow or orange. Be sure to add a little bit to the top. We'll be adding some thinner branches in a minute here. Got to go ahead and clean that brush, leave it in the water, switch to the little number zero script brush. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add smaller branches on our regular branches. These ones, we want to merge it. So I'm actually tracing the branch and then pulling slightly away. Okay, so follow that. That'll help them kind of grow naturally. Trace and then pull away. Trace and then pull away. 
we want to add a whole bunch of them. Again, they can go cross over on the blue, but they need to end up somewhere on the orange or the yellow. So make sure that is happening. Make sure some of it is ending up, all the little points end up on the orange or the yellow. A little bit here, a little bit there. I like a whole bunch of them. I'm just going to add a whole mess of them. Again, I want to use that tracing technique. You can also add some random ones, meaning they're not connected to the main branches. They're just kind of sitting there. They do have to kind of relate to the tree, though. But you're going to look around and see if there's been any big empty spaces and you're going to stick them so that they almost look like they were coming out of this branch but they're just kind of pointing to it they don't have to completely connect they just have to be somewhere close to it just anywhere there's an extra space you don't have to do too many clean this brush so stir it around in a circle we want to switch back to the red brush it's clean the same way but you need to dry it so use a paper towel dry it off so our paint does not drip all right, let's go ahead and mix. We want to get a scoop of Mars Black. We're adding it to our gray to make a darker version of it. Drawing off the brush, then we want to add two scoops of white over here on the other side. And we're going to start with the lighter color on our tree. We're going to go ahead and make some highlights along the right side of the tree. We want to skip over any branches at this point. Right now, we're going to skip over any of these branches. We're just going to work on the trunk for right now. So go ahead and add a nice line. I'm working on the gray, so don't make your tree that much thicker. Okay, then I'm going to add a little bit to the top of some of the thicker branches, only the ones on the right side, though. I'm going to switch to the little tiny blue brush next, the number zero script brush. Dry it off. Grab that lighter color. We're going to create some texture on the trunk of the tree. Now these lines curve. Don't make them straight like this. It doesn't look good. We want the tree trunk to curve, so we're going to make sure all the lines curve and they're kind of stacked on top of each other. They're all really, really close together. The only reason they kind of pull apart is because they're different lengths. Some are a little shorter, some are a little longer. You can't have some space between them, but for the most part, you want that nice line that we had at the beginning, the one at the very edge at the right, to disappear. We want it all to become these little tiny texture lines. Okay, so we're just creating this nice little texture we're going to do a little bit on the branches too, just anywhere we have the highlight. Don't let it stay like a little line. Add that little bit of texture to it. Okay, you can pick one of the branches on the left side and don't do all of them. Just pick one and go ahead and add a little highlight on it and have it come into the tree. See that? I made my little line come into the tree. And then same thing, add those little tiny texture lines going along it. All right, now I want to get that medium color again. I'm going to start making um, the highlight color blend out just a little bit. So I'm grabbing the original color that we had and I'm dragging it into the highlight color and then letting it blend just a little bit because it's still kind of wet. So I'm just kind of going back and forth. I'm doing this nice little curved zigzag back and forth, touching the lighter color, letting it merge onto the surface. Then I want to start adding um, a shadow so I grab my darker color and I'm doing my nice little curve line just like before. Don't make it super curvy. It's kind of a flat curve. Just curves a little bit. And I want to come in the center. I'm going to create this nice shadow area. So stick in the center of the tree. We don't want it to come on the other side. We want it to look very, very 3D. So we're going to put it in the center. It can kind of touch a little bit of the highlight, but we want to try to keep it in the center just a little bit. I like to rub with my finger towards the top because things are getting further away, so they're going to have less detail. So I like to rub it just a little bit. I'm going to add some shadows as well. I'm going to come on this little branch right here, adding some texture, kind of what, like what we were doing at the highlight, only in reverse. It's going to be at the bottom. Some over here as well. Just anywhere you can fit it. Try to keep it along the left side for the most part, though. Okay, if it gets too thin, don't worry about adding the texture. If you can manage it, though, it's fine. Go ahead and add some shadows over there. All right, we want an even darker color, so I added some more black, and I'm gonna add my nice little stripes on the bark. 
So these are just lines that are going to copy the same curve that we kind of have started. Okay, so I'm just going to add some. There's Some of them are going to be long, some are going to be short, some are going to start on the right side, some are going to start on the left side. Some of them are going to float in the middle. You can decide how many. I like to create kind of a triangle shape, meaning that the point is nice and thin and then it gets a little bit thicker. If it touches the side, it gets a little bit thicker on the side that it touches. Almost like a very skinny triangle. They can be nice and thick at the bottom of the tree. Try to make them a little bit thinner as you get farther up the tree. And you do that by putting less pressure on the brush. So put, try to balance your pinky somewhere or your wrist somewhere so you can put less pressure on the, the brush. Or just go back and thicken the ones at the bottom. Either way. Wherever you can kind of fit them, sticking mainly to the trunk, but going to the branches just a little bit too, the thicker parts anyways. Extra on the left side, maybe a little bit less on the, on the, sorry, extra on the left side, a little bit less on the right. Okay, I'm going to go back. I can either use the black or I can just use that very dark shadow color and I'm going to make all the little tips of the branches a little bit darker. So you can either make them a little bit longer or just add it right on top of the color that we had before. Okay, so you can either just, you know, kind of trace the very tips of the branches or you can add more branches or just make them a little bit longer. It's kind of up to you. I just kind of decide depending on the area. If there's extra space, I like to add a few extra branches or just make them longer. If there's not a whole lot of space, you know, maybe I'll just trace exactly what I had the first time. We want to darken all the tips of the branches. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch gears a little bit. So go ahead and switch brushes. Clean this one a little bit, but then grab the red one. Clean it the same way, dry it off, stir it around. We're going to get um, some different colors. We're going to need our oranges and our yellows again, so I need a new plate. I'm going to get a scoop of chrome yellow and a scoop of white. Mix them together. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix a dab of fire red and a scoop of chrome yellow, make my orange. And then I wanna make my reddish orange, okay? So a scoop of fire red and a scoop of chrome yellow or whatever's left in your brush sometimes, that works too. Just make sure you have three different shades. Clean your brush and you wanna start with the yellow first. So we start with the lighter color, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add some little leaves, okay? Wherever they'll show up. So I'm gonna work on the orange area first. Okay, so just some little curved little leaves. They just curve on the top and on the bottom. Come to a little bit of a point. You decide kind of how pointy you want them. Here's a little close-up. You can also do these three-part leaves where you make one individual leaf. Just like that. Maybe I'll do this one down here. And then I'm going to add two little curves on either side. And just make sure the one in the middle is the longest and you can have this nice little shaped leaf. You can do a little bit of each or you can just do one or the other. It's kind of up to you. Okay, you can switch colors too. I'm going to come over here on this lighter side. I have my dark reddish orange and I'm going to put some on the yellow area or the light orange area. So you can really go back and forth between each color. You just have to choose one that will show up. Make sure you're paying attention to size. You want the ones at the bottom or closest to the trunk of the tree or closest to the bottom of the tree to be a little bit bigger. And then as you travel up, we're gonna get smaller and smaller. See, this one's smaller and this one's much bigger at the bottom. This will create that near and far look. Okay, so just follow that simple rule. Just make sure it's a color that will show up. A Little bit darker on the lighter areas, a little bit lighter on the darker areas. You can just kind of wipe your brush in between colors. Don't have to necessarily clean it. And then make sure your trees go from large at the bottom and then coming up, they're a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. You can also just take your brush and add little dabs of color. So I'm just like, just for variety, add a little dab here, a little dab there. Don't necessarily have to be a leaf. It could just be a little dab of color, just to add a little bit of variety. Then I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna switch brushes. I wanna go ahead and grab my little brush and I wanna get a scoop of my chrome yellow, a little bit of the 
red and a little bit of the black. I want to make a brown. If you end up with a weird brown like this, feel free to add a little extra of the chrome red. Okay, so I have my little tiny brush. I'm going to outline some of these leaves. I'm going to put a little stem in the middle and then a little outline. Don't feel like you have to outline it cleanly. You can outline it in kind of a messy, loose way. You don't necessarily have to outline it cleanly. This is a painting. It's all about the style of the painting. This painting is kind of loose. So go ahead and have some of those loose lines where you're picking and choosing. You're like, okay, an outline here, maybe a little there. This one has a stem. This one doesn't. I kind of make the stems point to the branches, so whatever branch is closest, that's kind of where it's pointing. And I'm just picking and choosing parts to kind of outline. This helps balance out some of those very strong colors in the trunk of the tree, because the grays and the darker colors are very, very strong. So having this little bit of an outline kind of balances out some of the leaves and the overall feel of the painting. You have a very, very, very bright colors. And we want to balance out those dark colors just so the painting feels a little more balanced. Less like flat, you know, that trunk of the tree is just sitting flat on top of there. It makes the painting a little bit more connected to itself. Less like separate sections and more connected. And there you have it, our beautiful tree. Well, thanks for joining us at Paint Along Studios TV. Feel free to join us again. Happy painting!